This 120 mile loop through the southern Wind River Range starts and ends at the Scab Creek Trailhead and includes 12 passes. Texas, Jackass, and Temple Passes, the Pass to Coon Lake, Wind River Peak Summit, Lizard Head Plateau, Haley Pass, the Reed Bonneville Pass, the Bonneville Lakes Middle Fork Lakes Pass, the Middle Fork Lake to Halls Lake Pass, the Pass Above Shoestring Lake, and finally Europe Pass. Day one was an 11 mile hike up the Scab Creek Trail to the Cross Lake Trail to a camp at South Fork Lake. All right, about eight hours from home, Scab Creek Trailhead, heading up into the Wind River Range. I'm gonna do the uh, big southern high route loop that I made up, <laughs> uh, totally unofficial, and uh, should be a good trip, uh, smoke permitting. It's a little uh, smoky and weather permitting and body permitting and all those good things. Just reached the junction where uh, leave the Scab Creek Trail and head over towards Cross Lake, where I will probably spend the night, probably before then at uh, South Fork Lake. South Fork Lake, first camp. Some good views here. A lot of the range is visible from here. On day two, the Cross Lake Trail was followed to the Fremont Trail and Shadow Lake Trails, passing Shadow Lake and Billy's Lake, and going up over Texas Pass, camping after 15 miles on the east side of Texas Pass. All right, had a good night's sleep first night out at South Fork Lake. South Low Fork is beautiful. It's not right in the middle of the towering mountains but it's very open and you have a stellar view of pretty much most of the southern wind river range from these lakes out here in this uh, beautiful meadow area you just get stellar views of all the mountains uh, not too far in the distance very pretty place to camp Cross Lake's a pretty big lake that's coming up pretty soon. So yeah, it's a couple hours uh, of trail here between the Scab Creek Trail and uh, passing Cross Lake and then connecting up with the Continental Divide Trail for a little ways, heading down towards uh, Shadow Lake. And most of it is out in these beautiful meadows. This looks like they were manicured. <laughs> This is my new favorite breakfast food, Cliff Bar Coffee Collection. And they've got a shot of espresso in each bar. Um, one now and one around noon for lunch. Good stuff. Just finished the Cross Lake Trail or the Crossover Trail as it's labeled on some maps. Uh, boy, the, the PCT or the uh, Continental Divide Trail CDT. It's very well used by comparison.
bunch of interconnected trails and campsites above Shadow Lake. But uh, if you keep heading uphill and when in doubt, head left, you eventually get on the main trail that heads up over Texas Pass. This is the last lake before Texas Pass. The lake's right at the base of the pass, so it's a great place to get water. And the pass looks great up and to the right a little bit. Descending the southeast side of Texas Pass. There's Pingora. Finally get to see it. Some beautiful rock climbing up there. It's a nice trail down the south east side of uh, Texas Pass. Very nice trail. A lot less steep than the other side of Texas. And great spectacular views. Not a bad place for camp. It is probably a mile above Lonesome Lake, which gets extremely crowded for camping. And uh, I thought this would be nicer place and more quiet place to camp up here. Day three started with a descent to Lonesome Lake, followed by Jackass Pass, and then a big descent down to Big Sandy Lake and then up past Clear Lake and Deep Lake to Temple Pass and then down the Little Sandy Trail to the cross-country route that goes to Coon Lake. Just had some breakfast, which was nice. Texas Pass is right over, right over there. That's Texas. Most of the trail between Clear Lake and Deep Lake is just slab. Kind of go where you please on the right side of the creek, path of least resistance. Just summit of Temple Pass. 
steep coming up. Kind of lost the trail here and there a little bit. It's all open country, but it slowed me down a bit. And uh, Temple Peak, way up there, one of the higher ones in the southern winds. Camp at Coon Lake. It's a pretty lake. Not a lot of huge mountains around it, but a uh, nice, pleasant lake. Day four began with a cross-country route from Coon Lake to Teo Lake, followed by an ascent of Wind River Peak, which is the high point of this backpack trip. After descending to Deep Creek Lakes to the north and further to North Fork Trail, that was followed to Lizard Head Meadows, and after 16 miles, camp was set up at Bear Lakes. Just finished the cross-country route from Coon Lake to Teo. That's the saddle you pop down over um, on the way up to Teo. Coon Lake's on the other side. About a half hour to here at a good pace. And uh, yeah, the trail looks pretty decent, so uh, be able to use that for a little ways at least. Nice tundra. This first half of the ridge going up Wind River Peak. Can't beat it. <laughs> it's faster than some of the trails I've been on on this trip. Well, note if you're climbing this, especially with a heavy pack, that there's a big snow field near the summit. There's a lot of flowing water. There's several of these little rivulets. And uh, you don't need to carry more than uh, the water you need just to get up below the summit. Summit of Wind River Peak. There are a couple nice platforms up here for tents or bivy. At least uh, two or three. Be a wonderful place to camp, especially since there's water from that snow field three or four hundred feet down the other side of the summit. It is a long drop to the north, but it's nice to see a glacier. So the next order of business is down to Deep Creek Lakes. Made it down to the first pond in Deep Creek Lakes. Wind River Peak was very nice. It took longer to, to descend than I thought, but uh, not surprised. Made it down from Ice Lakes or Deep Creek Lakes Trail, and I'm at the North Fork Trail, or if you go the other way, Pinto Park Trail. So yeah, looking forward to doing this and getting up to Bear Lake. And it's a warm day. Looking forward to a Nice long swim. Whew! Yay! Made it to the junction with Lizard Head Trail. 
Should be uh, less than an hour, hopefully, up to uh, probably Bear Lake. There are two lakes up there. We'll see how they look. Day five began with a traverse of Lizard Head Plateau, and then uh, the Bears Ears Trail, the South Fork of the Little Wind River, and then after passing Grave Lake and Baptiste Creek, Haley Pass was crossed, and then after 18 miles, camp was made on Mays Lake in the East Fork Valley. Breakfast with a view. So what's the breakfast? Sausage. Raw garlic. I get to eat this stuff when I'm backpacking, but not at home with my wife who can smell me. My new favorite coffee backpack kind of thing. Cliff coffee collection. And then assorted nuts and gorp and mixes and dried this and dried that. All very palatable. I'll be eating that for breakfast and lunch, snack in the afternoon and dinner, and for the next four days. And I'll love it. divide up on Lizard Head Plateau. Another pole up here marking it. So from here it's down, 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 down. Rocks and snow. Snow is nature's best toilet paper. I'm going to put it to good use right now. I didn't have anything happen yesterday so I um, might have double portion today. And the rocks are great. I prefer uh, something like uh, grass, but uh, these are okay. The rounded ones are especially gentle. It's time for lunch. Something a little different uh, for lunch, for variety. Sausage, raw garlic, and uh, various mixes, trail mix, kind of granola kind of stuff. So uh, looking forward to that. Pretty good sized uh, cove here that's all sandy, sandy beach. Something you don't see in the mountains too much. I wouldn't mind coming back here and camping just to swim here all afternoon. Passing the west end of Grave Lake here shortly. I've already been going around this lake over an hour. It's huge, it's a huge lake. It's definitely the biggest lake on the trip so far. And there's some really pretty camping down there that uh, I wouldn't mind coming back here just to camp at this lake and do some swimming. A 
eight day hikers coming up the west side of Haley Pass. It was steep, but very good trail. Good switchbacks. Day six began with a hike up the East Fork Valley, past Pyramid Lake, to the pass between Raid Peak and Bonneville Peak. After descending to Bonneville Lakes, the lowest pass between Bonneville Lakes and Lee Lakes was taken down to the outlet of Middle Fork Lake. From there, it was a cross-country route over the pass just south of Point 11506 to Halls Lake. This is the lake just uh, less than a mile down from Pyramid Lake that I spent night five at. Just rounding the little pass above Pyramid Lake that gets you into the upper East Fork Valley. And it is really pretty up here. He's stalking fish. Just saw a bunch of them go splash. Mount Bonneville. Some big talus, but also a lot of little trail segments and grassy rocky areas, so kind of a mix. I think Texas was worse, Texas Pass. Harder anyway. Now well, just another 30 or 40 feet to go to the little flat grassy meadow where I'll take a sharp right turn and descend to Bonneville Lakes uh, down to Lake 10691 or something like that from uh, below Bonneville Lakes, whatever these lower lakes are called. Pretty area. Working around Bonneville Lake. Quite a bit of boulder hopping today. Approaching the saddle here between Bonneville Lakes where I came from and Middle Fork Lake. Made it to Halls Lake. Um, got here about 4.15. Had just enough time to set up the tarp, wash up a little bit, and uh, eat some food, and then it started raining pretty heavily. It has eased off a little bit, and then it uh, let off for a while, so I finished eating and getting everything ready for tomorrow. 
Day 7 began with an ascent of the beautiful valley above Halls and Shoestring Lake to the pass just right of point 11871. From there there's a high bench traverse to Europe Pass. And then after descending Europe Canyon and connecting with the Fremont Trail, I found a camp along the Scab Creek Trail after 17 miles. So uh, the goal is this pass north northwest of Halls Lake. And it looks like a pretty easy class two ramp that uh, traverses straight across to Europe Pass from this pass. That's looking back at the pass that goes down to Halls Lake. And then down here are Europe Lakes. And uh, behind that big upper Europe Lake is Europe Peak. And on the right side is the, uh, I guess the Southern Ridge. It's the ridge you hike up to uh, do the high route. The low point over there is Europe Pass. So one either descends on Talus to this middle lake, or what was real obvious on Google Earth is uh, this, there's kind of a ramp here, grassy, rocky ramp that tends slightly downward and then traverses straight across to, uh, well, the environs to the right side of Europe Pass, and then it just looks like a piece of cake on grass down to Europe Pass. Excellent. There's the pass to Halls Lake, the ramp, a little basin where there's water, and then maybe 300 vertical to get up here on the divide. It's the last half hour, these low, heavy, a friend of mine Steve calls them scuds, uh, ominous suckers. They've been um, building, coming from this direction. Now they're starting to appear pretty close to me. So, I don't know, going up a 12,000 foot peak on the Continental Divide with that, uh, eh, it's not the smartest thing in the world. And if I turn around here, uh, tomorrow will be a shorter day. I can easily get home for dinner tomorrow. And uh, that has some appeal, rather than eating jerky and granola and trail mix while I'm driving. Oh, hiking through some beautiful country on the Fremont Trail, Continental Divide Trail. Lake after lake after lake. Sand Point Lake. I'm not sure why it got its name.
made it. Scab Creek Trail. This is the trail back to the vehicle. All right, last night in the Wind River Range on this trip, night seven. I just washed up a little bit and dried off and had dinner and the sun came back out, which is really nice. Day eight was an 11 mile hike from the Crescent Lake area out the Scab Creek Trail to the Scab Creek Trailhead. It's raining. First morning woke up to rain, got up early and uh, Wow, it's been some heavy downpours. Intermittent, but very heavy. Like, just a river running down the trail. Back at the trailhead. That concludes our eight day, 110 mile high route loop made up kind of thing. <laughs> Got to see a lot of country and uh, pretty much most of the most uh, well recognized scenic areas in the southern winds. Four tires, they appear inflated, windows are intact. No claw marks, gouges. The inspiration for this trip was to hike a high route through the Wind River Range. If you do any research online or read any books about it, you'll find that most of the popular high routes through the winds are one-way routes. They start at one end of the range and they end at the other end. Rather than hiking a one-way route through the entire range, um, what I did was plan two separate loops, uh, a northern high route loop and a southern high route loop. Now this trip was the southern loop. Planning for this trip included internet research, viewing of multiple maps, and then also extensive use of Google Earth, especially for the off-trail parts of the trip. Most of the off-trail parts of this route are pretty well documented online, but there are two exceptions where I did a lot of research and I just couldn't find much information on it. Uh, the first is the ramp connecting Little Sandy Trail to the Coon Lake area near Wind River Peak. And then the second area without a lot of information online is the pass and the high bench connecting Halls Lake to Europe Pass. And um, there's some details about this in the description below. To make this trip as easy and enjoyable as possible while still being safe, uh, the principles of ultralight and lightweight backpacking were employed. There is a lighterpack.com link um, in the description if you want to see all of the uh, gear that I took on this trip. And then finally, for the camera and video gear, uh, the goal for this trip was uh, to carry the lightest and most affordable setup possible that still provided reasonable video quality and really good image stabilization without a tripod. For video, I used a GoPro 8 and for stills I used an iPhone SE and there are more details about um, the audio video equipment uh, and also how this video was made in the description below.